إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز المحكم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من آمن بالله وملائكته واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والمرفون بعهدهم إذا عادوا والصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون الله سبحانه وتعالى says in this verse the righteousness the birr is not that you turn your face toward this east or west or east and west but righteousness is to believe in Allah the last day the angels the books and the prophets it's also to give wealth to the close relatives your king folks and to the orphans to the poor person, the needy person, and also to the person who is to set free somebody who is being enslaved and somebody who is who has been imprisoned illegally and somebody who is captive, who was captured for ransom, and you pay and let them free. To let People who are enslaved to go free. And then Allah says, And also to establish prayer, to be charity. And then Allah says, And those who fulfill their promises and their covenants when they make one, when they make an appointment, they should be on time on that appointment. And the promise they take, they do, they fulfill it as, it, it, as they have taken it. <laughs> and those who are patient and steadfast in difficulties, hardship, and the, when there are disasters, and when, when the situation is very conversant critical in, in the cases of war, in the cases of natural disasters, in the cases of man-made disasters. And Allah says, those are the ones, those who fulfill all those conditions are the ones who are truthful. Those are the ones who tell the truth from deep heart. Those are the ones who, whom their act, act, actions and minds are connected to their beliefs. So they tell the truth because what they believe in and what they think and what they say and what they act upon, they are all in conformity. And Allah says, 
laikum saatakuna wa ulaika humur muttaqun and those are the real ones who are successful who are fearful to Allah who are uh, people who are uh, un uh, lawful to Allah my dear brothers and sisters this verse I can say if somebody understands this verse and applies all this whatever in this verse into their actions and you recite and act this verse alongside Surah Al-Asr then that can be enough for you to be a pure Muslim this verse combines a lot of which are the basic understandings of Islam. It tells you the fundamentals, the pillars, the principles and purposes of Iman, the faith. And it tells you the purposes and the principles of Sharia al Islamiyah, Maqasid al Sharia. So it teaches you Al Ahmar al Saliha how to be righteous and do good deeds, how to believe in Allah, and how to make Sharia, all of you. If you recite this surah, this ayah, uh, alongside with the verses before it, starting from Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and then to surah, beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, this ayah follows uh, number, it's number 177 of Surah Al-Baqarah. So if you recite those ayahs before it, and those after it, then you can see it is the center of the, that it makes you understand Islam. If you recite those ayahs after it, you will come to this ayah. So right after it, this is end. Then after that you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, all that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the judgment, the just, and then the holiness, al qisas So the, when Allah is talking about the qisas retribution, then after that you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the fasting. Because Allah has mentioned the belief and prayers in this verse, and then the next is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you about the fasting. Ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyam. And then after fasting information is done, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the information of the hajj. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is starting from this ayah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَهِلَّةِ قُلْ هِيَ مَوَاقِيتُ لِلنَّاسِ وَالْحَجِ وَلَيْسَ الْبِرُّ بِأَنْ تَأْتُ الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهَا this first, the last part of this verse, at the beginning of the first that I've recited, you see how they are uh, marching with each other. Allah is saying, um, The bir, the righteousness, the biasness, it's not that you come you, you enter your houses from behind, from the windows, and but the righteousness is that you enter your house from the right door, from the main gate, where everybody knows that you're gonna come from this door. So we need to understand, for example, this first. It's unfortunate that nowadays, because we focus on ritual activities, practices. We, we, we uh, narrow down Islam to practical things, which is about dressing code, walking away, like that. And, and, but we, we really understand the norms of all those orders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. Because we don't understand where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us in a metaphor way, but we take it literally and that leads us to make everything just like physical activities. For example, this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, 
the very the righteousness is that you enter your house from behind, but from the front door. So what is that? What the meaning there is very clear. You do understand. You must be somebody who has a principles, and you always you should not uh, behave with the society in a form of zigzag and cheating, deceiving here and there and being always someone who has no principle at all, but you must have, you must be straightforward, you must be acting exactly the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to act. So, uh, meaning is, don't do anything behind the doors. Be straightforward, be clear, that's the whole point. But the house is just an example, it's like a metaphor. So, and then, Going back to the first, this first, it is reported that uh, once uh, uh, the companion called uh, Abu Dhar was asked by a man, one of other the, one of the companions, he asked him uh, to tell him uh, what is the meaning of iman. He asked him this question: What is iman? Can you give me the definition of this? Faith, iman, and believing. Then he recited this verse. And the man became angry. He said, I didn't ask you about birth. I'm asking you about Iman. You have to understand what I'm asking you. He said, hey. Then Abu Dhabi smiled. And he said, By my God, I asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wasallam, the same question that you are asking me. And he gave me the same reply that I'm giving you. When I asked him, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa um, what is Iman? He recited this first that because he understands Arabic, then he gave him the definition. From there we understand that the Iman and Burri are interchangeable. But each one has a deeper meaning, a broader meaning in it. The meaning of Burri, actually the ulama when they are explaining the meaning of Burri, they say it's Ismun. It's a name or a noun that compiles and combines all the good deeds. So bir can be uprightness, goodness, good quality, um, to be righteous, to be pious, to be benign, to be obedient, and to make a full, complete, and perfect social welfare. To be justice also. To be truthful. And to worship Allah alone. It is all that meaning that is birth. So it is all about righteousness. Whether it is something that you are doing for the sake of Allah and in that you are seeking rewards from Allah. It means everything you are seeking rewards from Allah, but something that you are fulfilling an order from Allah, such as worshiping, or another order came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which has something to do with interacting with the society. So let us um, now look at this meaning of social welfare. The social welfare the ayah subhanahu wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the first and uh, Allah gave us this um, uh, numerous ones in numbers Allah gave us the first five articles in this verse are beliefs and to billah Allah says uh, the righteousness is in the person who believed in Allah for Yom al the day, the last day, all malaika and the angels, all kitab and the books, when the and all the prophets. Those are five. So these five are in the beliefs. They are the uh, articles of the believing. Then Allah started another one, which is real social welfare. Here, you tie a link with Allah, the Almighty. Then you want to tie another link or uh, relationship with your society. Then Allah starts from there saying, وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَىٰ وَالْيَتَعْمَىٰ And it is the one who comes with his uh, property, with his wealth, and his gifts. 
through that and double korba, the close relatives, the near kinship. Means the closer you start always when giving charity, charity begins at home. So you started from your family, relatives, and all the way those who are in real in need of it. But it, it's the other way you have to also be careful not to be indulged into, into this way that you only keep focusing on your own family, your own relatives. You, uh, all you do is just the need is. When their need is, is established, your family and your relatives, then you go to the next, 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 like that. And all you need to cover from your own self is just the daily food, shelter, the basic needs, not the things that uh, you just want. It's only the needs. When you cover the needs of yourself, cover the needs of your family, your relatives, and then go all the way and focus on the orphans. Allah says here, or Malaik, Mu'atal Mal Ala Hubbi, the Urkubba, one of the and the orphans. So who are the orphans? Orphans usually is described as the young boy or girl who missed their father and before they reached the other puberty age. Still we can elaborate this meaning to see because why they are called orphans, because they are, cannot help themselves and they have no one else to help them. So the same situation falls into those who are even uh, strong, 40 years old, have the physical ability, but still they, there is another impairment that they cannot do any job, they cannot help themselves, and they have no other one to help them. So they are in the category of orphan because they are helpless and hopeless and hopeless of. When they are on that, those are the orphans. Then after that you come to Delta Bauria Tama or Masakin and you come to the poor person, the person who need is really need is for help. Those who are in need of help, then they, they are the Masakin is the person, they are forced to the, the and those who are handcuffed, the disability people fall into this category. People who have for example, they are here in this country. They have no work permit, so they are not allowed to work. Even though they want to work, then there's a legal impairment. They need your help. Then they have disability, whether physical disability or mental disability. They need your help. Then, and it is all anyone who is in this situation, because the word, the meaning of miskin, it came, originally came from Sakana, is the one who is unstable. So when someone is unstable, and um, be it uh, financially, socially, and uh, uh, or even housing, that person is unstable. So he is the person who falls into this category. Wasailin, and those who ask for it. If anyone asks for help, and is a beggar, just help. You never know what is behind him, so just to help that person. Good. Then you follow also how you give priorities, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put into the priority. And wasailin wa firriqab, and Allah says, wa firriqab, those who are on journey, those who are the travelers, somebody who is on a trip, a person is, he needs help. He is, say, a new, newcomer to the country. You see, immigrant, he is just a guest. So um, anything could happen to that person. So then that person needs your help. Especially in most of the situations when somebody is um, traveling, maybe his luggage was stolen, maybe his money was uh, 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 maybe frozen. Anything could happen to that person. So you need to help him. Then from there we understand the social welfare is which number? The first number is the first category. Those five categories in the beginning are in the belief. It's to believe in Allah. Then the second category is social welfare. To help each other. It's worth it to know that in the history that it is reported Umar bin Khadab radiallahu an. When he came to, uh, he have seen an old man, a senior man, who was not getting any help from anybody. And the man, 
was a Jewish man. And many times he was uh, um, given da'wah. He was, uh, many people approached him to explain Islam to him. And then he got all the explanation, but he said, no way, I'm not accepting Islam. So he was well known of his uh, arrogance when he was a strong man. Now he's an old man. As, and Umar bin Khadab saw him that he has no help. And he became so angry until he banished those who were in charge of that. And he said, you must give him social welfare from the Beitul Ma'af, the house of the property, the government's property. So he was given social welfare. He said, regardless of his faith, regardless of his previous activity, he said, you used to take a, a tax from him. He was a tax payer when he was strong. And now when he became old, you are not helping him. What kind of justice is there? That is the justice we need. That's the burden we need. Then, actually, the ayah is a bit long. Maybe I cut the definition of that ayah there. And then after that, we start from the next point, inshallah, the next footpath. But in generally, because in our situation, I want to remind you and myself too, that brothers and sisters, we need to give a time. Like this verse of the Quran, to explain this verse takes us too long. It's time consuming for us. When we start, everybody's looking at the watch and everybody's in hand. But in the regular time, it was supposed to that we start explaining the first and in detail and discussion and long explanation. But now we need to give a time to study Islam, to start from the Quran, to understand the meaning of the Quran. One first can give us the whole picture of Islam. Then we need to understand it. Uh, Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, this topic, this ayah, I will give you an assignment to look at it. It's ayah number 177, and I want everybody, I would like to understand the meaning of this verse. Go back to the uh, Tafasir al Quran and read it. It's available both in English and in Arabic and in any other language, though in, it, it is detailed in Arabic language only. But then you can understand more about it. And read it with the verses after it. Then after that, we understand more about the Quran. And make sure, brothers and sisters, our understanding should not be limited to only understanding. And not only lip service, but it should be practical. We cannot be real believers until we, we put it in, in practice. straight and be close to each other, feet to feet, shoulder to shoulder, and uh, please make a uh, room there, those brothers and sisters coming after, give them a room, especially give a room to the entrance of the sisters' uh, space.